Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Brian over here at the Little Orchard Farm. Welcome to today's video. we got a really good one, really fun one for today. Uh, talking about, and more specifically talking to, those of you who are new, getting into uh, the uh, laying hen um, realm, uh, maybe getting some chickens for some fresh eggs. Well, this video is specifically for you. And well, we've got a lot to talk about today, so let's do this. When we first got our chickens, we had to make the decision on whether or not we wanted to allow our chickens to free range, just roam throughout the farm wherever they saw fit and make it back to the coop uh, in the evening, or whether we wanted to coop them up in some sort of a chicken run. Well, we initially decided to uh, allow our chickens to free range. And what that did was, man, that enabled our chickens to roam wherever they wanted, to forage, to scavenge. And it was really fun to have them out and wandering around the farm. But we noticed we had a couple of issues. Number one uh, was the predators. We had aerial predators, the hawks in particular, uh, that eventually would make their way in and find our chickens and would take a couple. And we lost a couple of chickens that way. Secondly, uh, they would get into our, how do I get there? There we go. They would get into our landscaping around the front of our cabin, uh, as well as along the side of the barn here. And man, they would toss the mulch out all over the place, just made a mess. And it was impossible to keep them out. We tried everything. I tried putting pepper uh, around, the, uh, around the landscaping on the mulch. Uh, that did not deter them. Even tried some automatic sprinklers that would kick on on movement and would spray them. Well, those little buggers could always find the, the blind spot in those sprayers, and it wasn't, it wasn't working. It wasn't going to keep them out. So we decided to instead to create some sort of a small chicken run using poultry netting to where we can move that netting around and allow them an opportunity to, to forage different areas around the coop area. And this worked for some time, but again, eventually the hawks found them and we lost another, uh, another uh, chicken. The last thing we tried was to put deer netting across the entire top of the chicken run area where the poultry netting was and, um, and, and simply put a lot of cover on the inside of that area to where they could get up underneath it and kind of maybe escape the predators. Well, and again, for a couple of months, that worked. And what the, the recurring theme here was that hawks are patient and hawks are very ingenuitive and, and they, they watch for that opportunity. And over the course of those next couple of months, actually the course of the next week, uh, we lost five chickens in one week to a hawk. Well, that, that was the nail in the coffin for us. And we decided that we were gonna build our own chicken run, a custom chicken run, if you will, a mega chicken run. We weren't gonna go small. If you're gonna go small, you might as well stay on the porch. We decided to go big. And so this is what we did. We decided that we were gonna build a 24 by 48 foot chicken run. And we felt like that that would be plenty of enough space for our chickens to, um, to, to forage and to be chickens and enjoy life and so this is what we did now it looks intimidating it looks massive it is massive it is really nice <laughs> but this is how we broke it down it was really really simple we knew that we were going to create eight foot uh, eight foot sections at a time and simply add on kind of modular build if you will starting over here in this corner this first section here this is eight foot coming all the way across takes six two by fours and we chose to put the uh, two by four here at the two foot mark these are eight foot tall all right so at the two foot mark we knew that we could put two feet of the hardware cloth and six feet of the chicken wiring. And we'll, I'll show you a close up of that here in just a second. Uh, but we built modularly. So we just said, okay, so eight. Uh, so if we're gonna come across 24 foot, that's four sections that we had to build. 
48 feet down the sides. We knew that that was a certain number and, and so forth. The only one that I left incomplete was the one right over here that would meet up against the coop area. We knew that that one was probably not gonna be exactly eight foot, but we just would build to it and then chop off uh, whatever we needed and make that one custom, if you will. The only other one that was different was this one right here, uh, obviously because of the door. So I framed up a little door header here and, uh, and we, still eight foot eight foot in length uh, but it had a little bit different structure because of the door sounds easy right it wasn't that bad the only thing that i would have done differently is we we should have done site prep a little bit uh, better we instead chose to start building it and then figure out the 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 um uh, how to keep it level if you will as we went along and it kind of got us in the fact that way down here at the very far end we're about a foot and a half lower than we are up here and so we ended up having to build a wall and so forth but here let's run through a quick little video some some video footage of what we did and i'll walk you through this as i mentioned before we started out by painting all of the two by fours we painted them all with black uh, fencing paint because that was an all-weather paint that would help protect the wood uh, its longevity as well as looks nice it's a nice aesthetic look to it the next thing we did is we started constructing the uh the eight foot panels and again we built as many as we thought we were going to need i think we built 17 panels and so we we built all of those panels uh and uh and had them ready to go the next thing to do was to get out on the build site here and we began by putting in ground the uh the, the actual posts we used posts from our property some cedar trees and pine trees that had fallen nice girth to them and we decided we we're going to use those and uh and and uh, use those as our supporting posts we we positioned those 16 feet apart so that we could nail the uh, frame to it at the breaking point so for example here you can see where the post and the break on the wall come right together. Well, we were a little off, a couple of inches off, but not too bad. And we were able to nail the framing into the post using some six inch, uh, six inch decking screws, really long, strong screws, lag bolts, if you will. Not bad. Now then, while I'm here, I'll show you what we did. We used the hardware cloth from the two foot mark down to the ground. And then from the two foot mark up, we installed chicken wire. This is the two inch variety. The reason why we did the hardware cloth at the bottom, of course, was so that no predator could get its little grubby hands in there. Raccoons being our biggest threat here. No way to get a, a paw through that. They can reach through here, but again, uh, again because the chickens are down lower, not a, not a significant threat. I don't believe, I think the, the risk is fairly low of a raccoon or even a coyote or something like that being able to get to our chickens. Now, once we began uh, constructing it, we took it in sections. So we didn't lay out um, all of the post and all that stuff all at one time. We took it one wall at a time to ensure that we were gonna hit where we thought we would hit in terms of our posts and so forth. And it worked out really nicely. And Ozzy agrees. Thanks, Ozzy. Going down the sidewall here, we uh, stayed in line. We pulled string, uh, we set string up and we just made sure we stayed on that string all the way down the wall. And we ran it the full distance. Ozzy loves me being out here. Thanks, Ozzy. So, <laughs> so we, we framed it all up uh, all the way around and then we came back and we began putting on the uh, chicken wire first so we ran the chicken wire because i wanted it to overlap down here a little bit so that the hardware cloth would cover that up we stapled it and then we came through and ever uh, ever so many feet we added screws with washers to simply lock that in and that would hold that up against the wall really nice and tight the last thing that we did was, is I bought some uh, nylon mesh uh, netting. I think I got it on Amazon or somewhere. But we got some netting, and I don't know if you can see it or not, really good. 
but it's 25 feet wide by 50 feet long. Now this is a 24 by 48, so I had about a foot or so overhang, which was really nice. I simply took the same types of screws with the large washers and we put them up on the very top plate up there and walked this netting out as we, uh, as we unraveled it and kind of pulled it taut and got it up there. And that in general was the full build. It took us about two days to do this. And I know you're looking at this thing and no way, no way it had to take long. No, it was really that simple. We simply got our, made sure we stayed along true to our string. Uh, we uh, connected each of our eight foot sections with two inch long screws because you have an inch and a half on one wall, inch and a half on another. So that's a three inch thick wall. So a two inch screw would lock these together. And we simply did that up and down to ensure that we um, locked all of these things together nice and tight. And it is secure. It's not going anywhere as it cracks and falls. No, I'm kidding. Now then, the last thing that we needed to do was to, we need to get grass growing. I don't know if you can see it or not. Sometimes it's hard to pick up on the camera. But we uh, tossed seed. We used this, we used the, uh, the poultry netting to kind of, segment out one section so that we could get grass growing in here. Once we got the grass growing, we brought in our new chickens who are about four weeks old. And they're over here in the corner. And these will be the new addition to the flock as we, again, uh, the purpose of doing this is we lost so many of our hens. So these are our replacement hens um, and we're excited about them. We also uh, carved out another third of the pen and we've got grass growing here. Uh, and so once all of this is done, these chickens will be ready to be introduced to the rest of the flock. We'll remove all the fencing and they will then have this entire area to be chickens and have a chickeny good life. And hopefully lay us some really good eggs. Well, that's it. That's the full build. A simple couple of days build to protect your chickens. We found that a couple of lessons learned from this were really, really uh, simple, common sense kind of things. Number one, having a two-man crew versus doing this all alone. I've seen people do it uh, with uh, kind of a single-man build, if you will, and it helps to have a couple of sets of hands, whether it's staying plumb, whether it's unraveling of the wire, whether it's the unfurling of the netting. Two-person crew is by far the way to go, without a doubt. The other lesson that we uh, learned was the site prep should have been done first and foremost. You want to have a good even plot uh, in order to lay these walls out. Uh, you don't want them to get janky to where they're going up and down, simply because you got to roll that wire out. And you don't want to have to be doing that with your wire. It makes it impossible. It makes it ridiculously impossible. Two-man crew, definitely the way to go. Finally, uh, uh, painting it. Painting it on the front end was a lifesaver. Probably saved us a ton of time. Coming, having to come back and do it after the install, nowhere close. Easily do all your prep work as much as you can do up front. Painting these where it was a lifesaver on the front end of it, it made for real quick work when we were installing it. It was really, really a good, good thing to do, without a doubt. Well, listen, guys, that's all there is to this. Just thought I'd share our brand new chicken coop, our little chicken run, rather. Uh, I think they're going to have a wonderful time playing in this thing, and, and hopefully they'll reward us with a, some beautiful, nice eggs uh, that we can enjoy. Well, hey, listen, until the next time, we hope you guys have a wonderful week and a very blessed week. Until we see you again the next time, we will. See ya.